Thank you, Brother Enzi, and praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. If you'll remain standing for the reading of the word of the Lord, turn with me, if you will, to the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 3. 2 Kings, chapter 3. And we'll begin reading with verse number 14. 2 Kings, chapter 3. Verse number 14, And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass, when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. And ye shall smite every fenced city and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree, and stop all wells of water, and mar every good piece of land with stones. And it came to pass in the morning, when the meat offering was offered, that, behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. I want to preach to you for just a few moments, now on the prescription for victory in the valley. The prescription for victory in the valley. Let's go to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, we ask you this day to reach, Lord, to each of us through the medium of your word. Oh, God, we ask it for your glory. We know, Lord, that you and only you hold all the answers for us today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Lord Jesus. We praise you from the depths of our souls. We love you, Lord, with everything that is within us. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Lord bless you, and you may be seated. I recognize today that normally when we speak about a valley, we're thinking about just uh, a period of time or some uh, several periods of time that is in our lives when we experience sorrow, tears, heartache, fears, depression. All of those things are usually what we call valleys that we go through. But I would like to, uh, just for a, a few moments, think about it in just a little bit different vein. I'd like to think about our entire lifetime as a valley that we go through in order to reach the great mountaintop of heaven that we're all going to enjoy someday. Amen. Amen. So let's just think about it for that, uh, in that way for just a few moments now. None of us are exempt from this valley. All of us are going to experience it. And God did not mean for that valley to be a graveyard where people would die. He said he was not willing that any should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. Amen. And it's not a place of death. It's not a graveyard. But it's a place of growth. It's a place of direction. It's a place of victory. Amen. Our lives were not meant to be lives of sorrow. Our lives were not meant to be lives of heartaches. Our lives were not meant to be lives of depression. But our lives were destined for victory. We were born for victory. We were destined for victory, amen. But there is an enemy of our souls that would like to get us into a place that we would be destroyed. And we know who that enemy is today. Jehoram, the king of Israel, for 12 years wrought evil, not quite as much as his mom and dad, Ahab and Jezebel, because he destroyed Baal. In fact, he just didn't want any worship of Baal. But the Bible does declare in 2 Kings chapter 3 that he cleaved unto the sins of 
Jeroboam. So he did some evil. And Misha was the king of Moab. Moab uh, was the son of Lot's daughter. And this was a very wicked people, extremely wicked and sinful, idolatrous people, worshipped Molech, sacrificed their children unto those gods. In fact, you'll find in the 27th verse of chapter number 3 that Misha, after all of this had taken place, he went back and sacrificed his eldest son on the wall to one of those gods. And Misha had some dealings with Jehoram, and in those dealings he rebelled against Jehoram. So Jehoram numbered Israel and uh, found out he didn't uh, quite think he was as strong as he wanted to be. So he asked King Jehoshaphat if he would join forces with him. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. So he did. And they together went to Edom. And there in Edom, the king of Edom joined them. So they had three kings and three forces. And together they went through the wilderness, the valley of Edom, for seven days without any water whatsoever. And they got to thinking about that for just a little bit got together and one of them said well what in the world is going on around here what's happened has the Lord brought us out here in this wilderness to be delivered into the hands of the Moabites and somebody said and I believe it was King Jehoshaphat somewhere back in his mind he began to think about some things I knew some prophets way back there. I used to know them. I used to be associated with them. And finally he blurted it out. He said, is there not a prophet around? Is there a prophet somewhere? And one of the servants of Israel spoke up and said, yeah, there's Elisha. He's uh, that man that back there some days ago poured water over the hands of Elijah. And I want you to notice something about that. That's all they remembered about Elisha was that he was a servant of Elijah. But they called on him. It has been the plan of God since time began that a man would give direction from God to a people that he has created. We've always needed a prophet. We've always needed a preacher. We always will need preaching. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. It was in the book of Acts chapter 2 that Peter gave direction to some people at Pentecost. And the same day there were 3,000 added to the 120 after they had asked men and brethren, what shall we do? And then later on it was Philip who went out into the desert of Gaza and he alone gave direction to uh, just uh, an Ethiopian eunuch, just one man, and baptized him in the name of the Lord. It was Peter who brought direction to the household of Cornelius and uh, all of them received the Holy Ghost while he spoke the word of God. It was Paul that gave direction to a Philippian jailer. And that jailer, as he washed his stripes, and Paul began to talk about the word of God. Paul began to talk about his experiences. He began to tell him about the road to Damascus and how that the Lord had been there and met him and shone round about him with a great light and talked with him by the way how that he had been to the house of Ananias. Ananias had laid his hand on him and re he received the gift of the Holy Ghost as he began to talk about that to that Philippian jailer that old jailer received direction and that same night he and his household were baptized it was Paul again who gave direction to John's disciples at Ephesus who said we haven't heard whether there be any Holy Ghost and he began to tell them that he was not they were not just to believe on John but John preached that you to believe on him that should come after me and he laid his hands on them and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost 
Amen. It has always been God's plan that preachers will give direction. Thank God for preachers. Thank God for preaching like we hear at the district camp meeting. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, man, I love preaching. I'll just be honest with you just a, a few minutes. I love preaching. I want you to preach to me. I need a preacher. I don't care how old I ever get. I'll always need a preacher. I need direction. I'll always need direction. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I respect our elders. And notice, as I said a little while ago, about the only thing they could remember about Elisha was that he had poured water out on the hands of Elijah. Amen. There's got to be a spirit of wanting a, an elder minister or someone that's been down the road. And I'm a young minister. I'm just being open and honest with you today. But I want the elder ministers to give me direction. I want them to rub off on me. I want to be around them. Hallelujah. I want to associate with them. I want to pour water out on their hands. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I, have, I hate to think about the day that we would ever cease to hear the great statesmen that we have around this camp meeting. I, I admire Elder Brother Kid Rose every time that he walks to the platform. I never want to get to the place that I ever, I ever say, well, well, uh, you know, he's, he's a little bit older now, and, and I, I don't really, you know, uh, he, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to, I want to stay in the attitude of I want to walk in your footsteps brother I want to be there I want to be right close to you I want some of the same direction that you had I want it to rub off on me hallelujah hallelujah praise God praise God there have been times and I still remember many of the messages that he has preached brother Kilgore and others that I have heard and been privileged to hear so many times, so many times they have preached and I wanted to crawl to the altar. I wanted to find a place somewhere because I realized those men had direction and I want direction too. Amen, 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 amen. We have to have it. We have to have direction and preaching gives us direction. Amen. We'll never get along without it. It'll never be. And God help us never to get to the place that anything ever takes preeminence over it. Praise God. Preach on, brother. Preach on. Preach the word of God. Give direction to a world that needs direction. Elisha came and called for a minstrel. Somehow, I've always felt just always had a gut feeling way down inside that that minstrel that came and played didn't play the popular contemporary song of the day. He played something that glorified the one true God of Israel. Amen. I just believe that. You know why I believe that? Because after he started playing, the Bible said that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Amen. Amen. Our music, our music, and I, I recognize that there's probably been a lot said about it, but I've got to say it too because it's <clears throat> from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I just simply <clears throat> feel... that our music must glorify God. If it does not glorify God, it has no place in our services. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't guess there'd be anybody that would love music any more than I do. I don't, I don't know of anybody that would ever think of music any more than I do and I love music but there's something about it 
And I had to come to a place in my own life and in my own heart that my music had to be dedicated glorifying the Lord. No matter what it is. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. After somebody gets through singing, if you don't know what they've sung about, if it hasn't left a residue of a message, if you can't even feel what they, what they were trying to get across, if it really doesn't do anything, if it doesn't draw anything out of you, then it's really of no value. It really hasn't done anything. It's quite out of place. Amen. Whatever happened to the old songwriters, Brother G.T. Haywood, who came out of a private fa fasting and prayer conference and came out singing, I see a crimson stream of blood. It flows from Calvary. Its waves, which reach the throne of God, are sweeping over me. Another time in sin I wandered sore and sad with bleeding heart and aching head till Jesus came and sweetly said, I'll take thy sins away. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood that washes white as snow. Glory. All our music must glorify the King of Kings. It must produce worship. It must produce an atmosphere of loving and worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I recognize that we have some great songwriters among the ranks of Pentecost. But there are some songs that are floating around that has absolutely no place in our worship services. Amen. They have no place there. We might as well leave them out. Amen. Amen. Oh, the old songs, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. Draw me nearer, Lord, to thee. Glory to God. Oh, producing an atmosphere of loving our Lord. Hallelujah. That's when the glory of the Lord begins to fall. That's when the hand of the Lord begins to move. That's when something is drawn out of a soul and it reaches to something that is higher than it is. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. There's no place for rock music. It's been said many times, but there's no place for it in the ranks of Pentecost. There's no place for it. Absolutely no place for it whatsoever. Leave it out and nothing that even sounds like it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Oh! Music must glorify the Lord. It must. It must. There is no choice. It must glorify God. It must glorify God. Every time a singer steps up to a microphone, there must be a desire in the heart of that singer that I've got to love the Lord. I've got to worship Him. I've got to give Him everything that I am. If I step to a microphone and sing and never reach that place, then I never have accomplished the purpose that God meant for it to accomplish. I never have gotten there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but whenever I sing, I always like to get to the place that I'm totally oblivious to everything and everybody around me. I'm singing and making melody in my heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I could care less at that time whether anybody else ever raised their hands and glorified God because I am glorifying Him. But you know, it just has a way of working that way. That if you glorify God, it's going to bring the hand of the Lord upon the congregation. Hallelujah. 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 The Spirit of the Lord is going to flow. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now let's look for just a second at what happened. And I've got to hurry here. Got to get along. But there's a little test that if a song doesn't leave a clear message and draw something out of the soul of the hearer when it's all said and done, then it's absolutely of no value. 
is absolutely of no value whatsoever. We need talent, but not at any cost. We need worship more than we need talent. Somehow, I just believe that God has his hand on some people with abilities that have dedicated those abilities to God. And we don't need talent just for talent's sake. It just absolutely has no place. Praise God. Let's look at the direction that Elisha gave. First of all, he said, I want you to dig some ditches. Now, what in the world are you going to dig ditches for? I imagine they looked at him kind of funny. Dig ditches? Yeah, I dig some ditches. How deep do you want to dig them? Well, how much water do you want? How much water do you need? Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's look at it for just a second. There's a soul that's thirsty. There's a soul that has wandered in the wilderness of Edom for so long and just about to give up. That soul comes in to the house of the Lord and there receives direction, directed to an old-fashioned Pentecostal altar. And there they pour their souls out to God. How long do I have to pray, preacher? How deep do I have to dig this ditch? How long do I have to repent? What do I have to do? Just as long as it takes. Just as long as it takes for you to get clean. As long as it takes for you to get everything out of there. Make room for the Holy Ghost. Make room for victory. Make room for a victorious life. Get everything else out of the way. Put it aside. Get self out of the way. Lose yourself completely. That's repentance is losing yourself. Turning aside from what you used to be and looking toward God. Amen. That is direction for a life. And when a life does that, how long do I have to pray every day? Just as long as it takes to get rid of yourself. As long as it takes to get rid of the flesh. As long as it takes to get right with God. How, how much do I have to fast? Just as much as it takes to get rid of self. Just as much as it takes to get rid of your will. That's how long it takes. Praise God. Praise God. And I want you to look at what happened after they dug those ditches. The Bible said that the water came. They didn't know where it came from, but it was there. We don't always know how to tell everybody that the Holy Ghost, you know, where it comes from, what it is, you know, how it happens. Just exactly. I don't know all about it. I don't understand all I know. But I know it's there. I know the prophet of the Lord said it's going to be there. And when I do what he said, I know that it's going to happen just like he said it would. So it did. <clears throat> and then, after they got that direction, the Moabites came. And you know what they saw? Reading a little further than what we read earlier, they saw red. All they could see down in that valley was red. They thought it was blood. And it wasn't. They had just drank out of it. But they, that's what they saw. So they thought, well, we're going to go down. We're going to get them. Now, everything's going to be taken care of. We're going we're to take them now. So they came down. And those three armies that just a few days before had no direction whatsoever. Didn't know what to do or where to go, what, what was going to become of them. <clears throat> they rose up and they took all of the Moabites. They destroyed that army. Took them right then. They were delivered into the hands of Israel. <clears throat> and after that happened, they went... And just as the prophet had said, notice they followed it to a T. They went and they tore down the cities, the ones with fences, the good cities, the good land. They put, marred them with stones. All kinds of things happened. They did it just exactly like the prophet had said they would do. Praise God. Praise God. Elijah's direction, or Elisha's direction, did not stop with the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. The preacher's direction, the apostolic preaching does not stop with just the Holy Ghost. But there's victories after that. There's victories after the water. There's victories after that. You know what happens when the enemy comes and looks at a soul that has been washed in the blood of the Lamb? The enemy can't see anything but red. All he sees is the blood of Jesus Christ. When he looks down on that valley, all he can see then, and suddenly it looks like the blood that was shed back on Calvary. It looks like to him that, oh, now I'm going to go down, I'm going to get him. But when he gets there, he cannot destroy anything that has been blood washed, anything that has been blood bought, anything that has been set free by the grace and power of the Holy Ghost, anything that has been set free by the Lord. The enemy cannot destroy it. All he sees is red. All he sees is the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what is happening in the world today. We live in a world. The enemy wants to destroy us. And there are a lot of people without direction. So there must be some direction given. And in the, the direction, there is a destruction of the enemy's forces through the application of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Every time a soul comes in out of the world and is washed in that blood, there is a destruction because Satan has no longer any control over that soul. Hallelujah. 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 Absolutely no control. The prescription for victory in the valley. Prescription for victory in the valley. A menstrual to produce worship, glorifying the King of kings and the Lord of lords, a preacher to give direction, and then obedience to that direction. Those three things will give you victory in this valley of life. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is victory in the valley. There is victory in the valley. It's going to be. The prophet said it would be, and it's going to happen just like he said it would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I appreciate, I appreciate the direction that we have been given. Amen. And I want to be obedient to that direction. I want to follow it. When I do, then everything is going to be as it should be. It's going to work out just fine. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let's lift our hands again and love the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand and worship the Lord a little while here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for victory in the valley. Thank you for the prophets.